Hey everybody, welcome to the Convenience Marketing Group. My name is Tim Lazar. I'm the president of the Convenience Marketing Group. This is a podcast for three groups of people. One is presidents, CEOs of convenience stores. Uh, secondly, it's for CEOs and executives of distributors that are in the convenience space. And third, it's for manufacturers and suppliers that sell into the convenience channel. And more specifically, this podcast is for people that want to differentiate their products and their services, create more value around them, then market and communicate those so that they can drive sales volume and more margin. So we're not for everybody, but that's the specific purpose of this specific podcast. So today's topic, I want to talk about how to create C-store point of sale campaigns that absolutely crush it and can grow your sales. So this is more focused toward, toward the retailer. And I start with this is because point of sale campaigns, when it comes to marketing and differentiation, are one of the simplest, most inexpensive ways that you can drive sales and revenues within your store. And unfortunately, it's one of those areas that people don't do really, uh, really well. So when I worked for a uh, major furniture retailer, a very aggressive furniture chain in Altoona, Pennsylvania. And I also at the time uh, after that worked for an advertising agency that did all the marketing for sheets. This is some of the ideology that I brought to the table in terms of point of sale campaigns and helping drive retail sales. So <clears throat> starting off, I just wanted to say I'm, I'm always kind of bummed out and disappointed at how mediocre point of sale campaigns are are executed inside convenience stores. Again, not picking on anybody, but they can be so much better and they aren't. So today I'm going to try to teach you some of the ways that you can make your point of sale campaigns cr absolutely crush it. Uh, now, when I refer to point of sale campaigns, I'm including things like pump toppers, window signs, digital signs, road signs, social media offers. It could be employee t-shirts, it could be employee buttons, it could be banners outside or inside the store, it could be uh, danglers, displays, shelf talkers, and anything else you can think of within the store or outside of the store in the forecourt that's used to communicate to customers at the convenience store to get them to buy something specific. And I emphasize something specific because point of sale campaigns can't be all things to all people. They have to be for very specific groups of people. Um, so when you see bland manufacturers offers, I think they're bland for, you know, two cans of snuff, uh, for three forty nine, or two bottles of energy drinks for two ninety nine, two bags of chips for this, two bottles, you know, of that, uh, please, I mean, put me to sleep. Any convenience store can do this and there's absolutely nothing that's unique about it. There's nothing that you're creating value or story around. Um, I could literally, you know, you could close your eyes and I could drop you inside any one of a hundred different convenience stores today. And when you open your eyes and look at all the point of sale around you, you'd have absolutely no idea what specific convenience store you're in at that moment. And I would contend to you that you should know based on the attitude, the ideology, um, just the kind of the edginess of the C store, you should know what store you're in at that moment. So anyhow, it just doesn't have to be that way, uh, and it shouldn't. Your business, your convenience store business is so much better than that. So before we get into the tactics of what I consider really effective point-of-sale campaigns that drive sales, I'd like to ask you three founda foundational questions about your stores before we begin. And this will start to reflect things that you'll then work into your point-of-sale campaigns. Now, um, the purpose of these three questions that I'm going to ask you is to challenge your thinking and to push you to begin uncovering your, la your larger differentiated retail business strategy that every convenience store owner should have, including you. Um, the answers to these questions, again, will directly affect and improve your point of sale campaigns, and then it'll absolutely help the next one that you do. So those three foundational questions are, number one, what do you believe about your convenience stores that makes them unique and different than your competitors? And what is your specific point of view about the convenience store industry and its customers today? Again, think about the answer to that question. Question number two, as far as your ideology is, <clears throat> what is the new value that you're creating for your customers this month? What's the new value you are creating in your stores to get new customers onto your lot and into your stores buying more stuff. Basically, what's your philosophy? What's your plan? What's your program for doing that? 
And thirdly, before you create a new point of sale campaign, what specific competitors do you want to challenge with it? And more specifically, I'm asking this question that we always used to ask at an advertising agency that I worked for. The question is, who do you want to take business from? There's only so much business in a marketplace. There's so many gallons of gas. There's just so many chips. There's so many uh, drinks or whatever. So sometimes with your point of sale campaign, if it's really good, it should be targeted not only to specific people, but also you should be challenging yourself to take business away from some of your competitors. Now, most convenience store owners and executives have really never been asked or answered these types of questions, and it's one reason their point of sale programs are dull, and as, as well as, I think, some of their other marketing programs as well. And again, this is not to pick on you, but to elevate the game and make sure that your marketing and your point of sale campaign specifically as a good starting point are a lot better than they used to be. So how do you do it? What are the tactics to make your point of sale campaign cr absolutely crush it inside and outside of your stores? Well, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to create a point of sale campaign for a specific target audience. You don't want to be all things to all people. Remember, it's not just Bubba who shops convenience stores today. And you know that it's women, it's teens, it's even seniors. And good point of sale campaigns should be designed to sell a specific product at a specific price to a specific target audience while still conveying your company's unique point of difference and the value that it creates. And it's not that hard to do that. So let's create an example. Suppose you want to introduce a new CDB, one of the cannabis-based products out there, in a point of sale campaign. So ask yourself who the target audience is for this product and why they ought to use it. Remember, we're not being all things to all people. So with a little bit of research, you're going to find out that the target audience, it's both going to be male and female, probably skews 50-50%. But they're going to tend to be a little bit younger, 18 to 35, uh, the people that use CDB products. And they're using those products specifically for three reasons. It's to reduce pain. It's to relax or just enhance their overall feeling of health. So now you have three benefits there. So now as you start to create your point of sale campaign with your marketing or your creative team, they will have started with specific benefits, benefits that are relevant to a specific target audience. And this is an essential first step when you create great point of sale campaigns uh, at your convenience stores that's going to move a lot of products. So that's the first thing you're going to do is you're going to think about that specific target audience and the specific benefits that you want to offer them. The second thing you're going to do is you're going to demand a bigger idea or a retail hook in your point of sale campaign for whoever's helping you design it. It might be you, but so demand that of yourself or of your team. And this is really big marketing ideas uh, really are the engines of convenience store business today. And there is both an art and a science to coming up with big retail ideas that are relevant to your target audience. And the only way I know to uncover them is through collaboration with your marketing and creative team and getting into the weeds with any research data you can uncover about your next point of sale campaign. It's some work and it's hard work. But it's going to make a difference. And many retailers today just don't want to do that work. And I would highly recommend that you dig in and do a little bit of work because it's going to go a long way. And as you do this over time, you're going to find the work uh, has an exponential and a building effect. And you've heard me say that before. Innovation, creativity, it takes time and it's not always efficient, but those big ideas are born in the research and they're always worth it. So finally, if you ever hunger to grow as a convenience store retailer and have that, what I call the eye of the tiger, and you want to be a leader in the convenience store industry in your market, you have to carve out some time to collaborate with your marketing team and generate big retail ideas for your business. The third thing you want to do with your point of sale campaign is you want to attach specific sales goals to your point of sale campaign. So let's, let's go back to that CDB example. Pretend that 2,000 people shop your three stores each week. That would be a total of about 24,000 potential customers each month. Now take an educated guess as to how many people fit the criteria of the target audience. Let's just estimate it might be a third or a little bit less. It's 30%. So 24,000 customers per month times that 30% would equal 7,200 potential 
CDB buyers who might want to try these new products within a month that are going through your stores. Now, you're not going to sell everybody with your point of sale campaign, but maybe you get 15% of those people. So it's now 7,200 potential CDB customers times 15% would equal about 1,080 customers who are going to buy a CDB product from you. So when you look at the, that 1,018 times a $20 average purchase, because this is a higher ticket item uh, of this particular product, that would be about $21,000, 600 in sales, and a gross margin of, let's say, 60% would equal 12000 960 bucks of profit. So if you run the point of sale campaign for two months, you could end up with about $25,920 worth of profit off of that point of sale campaign. So if you invested $3,000 into the overall design and creativity and the printing of your point of sale campaign, and you subtract that from the $25,900, your final payout from your point of sale campaign is about $22,900. The point of all of that is, it's only by being specific about your target audience and the specific the sales goals of a point of sale campaign that you're going to have success. When you get into the weeds a little bit, you're going to be able to figure out how much you're making, what your payout of all of that is, and you'll want to do great point of sale campaigns time and time again. The fourth thing you want to consider here is you want to create point of sale campaigns for the medium that's carrying the message at your stores. Now, I would ask you, how many times have you stood at a gas pump trying to read the offer on a pump topper at night and the typeface is way too small, it's way too thin, it's too far down on the pump topper, it has a blocked view, and you can't even understand what the offer is. So what do you do when that happens? You basically ignore the offer, which is the worst thing you can do for your brand is have it be ignored. This is what I mean by designing for the specific media that the point of sale uh, campaign will appear on. There's many avoidable mistakes that are ha that'll happen right here. So two pieces of advice. First, keep it simple. And the second thing is with today's technology, you can inexpensively print out or look at the digital of some of your point of sale campaigns and try them at your store. But look at them critically. I mean, do they grab attention? Do they make sense? Are they easy to understand? And are you excited by the offer? Would you buy this product if you were the target audience? Um, and then the last thing to ask yourself is the offer, is it different and is it valuable? So just use your common sense here and look at your point of sale campaigns as, as a customer would. And you're going to have a lot more success as you put them up. The fifth thing, uh, point of sale campaigns must communicate first and they, be, they, they have to be creative seconds. And I'm going to say that again. Your point of sale campaign has to communicate first and then be creative second. <clears throat> this is a mistake that a lot of creative teams can make. And because your creative team, they want to be just that. They want to be creative. And that's what you want them to be when they are reflecting what you believe about your business. You want them to communicate the new value that you're bringing to your customers, and you want them challenging your competitors. However, and I say however again, you want the creative team, um, if your creative team is bringing point and sale campaigns to you that are really clever and creative but do not communicate the core product offering and the value, it's your job to reject it. It's your job to reject it because the point of sale campaign is off strategy and it's not communicating clearly and it won't achieve your specific sale goals, sales goals as we discussed in item number three above. When thousands of people are exposed to your point of sale message each week, you simply can't afford confusion or worse, being ignored. And the more stores that you have, the more confusion you can potentially cause. So you have to stop when everything is inexpensive and on paper or when you can look at it digitally and make sure that it communicates first and that it's creative second. The rule of thumb there um, is just communicate the point of sale offer clearly first and then factor in the creativity. You want both, but that you have to do them in that order. Number six, you consider, <clears throat> consider the tone of your point of sale campaign. Now, this is starting to be the kind of the icing on the cake, if you will. But since your convenience store is a unique reflection of you and what you believe, as we talked about above, 
it's the reason customers do business with you. So make sure that your tone is reflected in your point of sale campaign. It's going to influence things like the copy, the typeface, the, so, the, the photo selection. And it's just one more layer of unique communication to your point of sale campaign in all of your stores. Number seven, you want to minimize words with your point of sale campaign. It's, it's really nearly impossible to do, but if you can communicate your offer with only visuals, do it. Um, as you add words or pricing to your point of sale campaign, you want to challenge yourself only to include as much copy as needed to communicate the offer, and that's it. Just remember, it's a visual world. Make it work for your point of sale campaign in a, in a world basically of distracted consumers. Don't make them read too much. Don't let them digest too much. Get your offer across creatively. Make it valuable. The point of sale campaign will do the rest of the work. And number eight, you want to know what specific action you want your customer to take with your point of sale campaign. This is missed in a lot of campaigns that I see. And take a lesson from uh, political campaigns. Political campaigns and point of sale campaigns are very similar in this regard. They leave absolutely nothing to chance for the customer. They know exactly what they want the voter or customer to do after being exposed to the message. You know, do you want to grab a product inside the convenience store? Again, if that's out at the pumps, where specifically? The commissary, in a in a display, in a cooler. Do you want them to visit a website? Do you want them to find a coupon on their smartphone? Do you want them to sign up for a loyalty program? What action do you want them to take? Getting customers to take action is everything in a point of sale campaign. Again, leave nothing to chance. You tell them what to do, then just ask for the sale. The final thing you want to do with your point of sale campaign at the end of all of this work is you basically want to have fun. I mean, you know it. The convenience store business is tough. It's getting tougher. It's competitive. And really effective point-of-sale campaigns, uh, it's their work. But the results, if you follow these nine steps, are absolutely worth it. If you collaborate with your creative team and put together point-of-sale campaigns um, that have some fun and use your sense of humor as well, you'll be successful. Finally, if you have any questions about this, you can feel free to contact me at Tim Lazar at comcast.net and I'll spell that for you. It would be T-I-M-L-A-Z as in zebra, O-R at comcast.net. You can visit our website for great point of sale campaign examples and that uh, website is conveniencemarketing.net. You can check us out on our YouTube page. Uh, just look for the Convenience Marketing Group on YouTube. You can check out our Buzzsprout podcast. Uh, again, just look for the Convenience Marketing Group dot com or you can also uh, Google for the Convenience Marketing Group blog where we blog on some topics uh, related to all of this. Again, good luck with your point of sale campaign. I wish you success. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And if you have examples of great convenience store uh, point of sale campaigns you'd like to share with us, please send them to me. We'd be happy to put them up on our website. Uh, good luck.